So, my name is Kyle, and I'm the owner of Gorman Smith Beverage Equipment, and today we're going to talk about how to get the brewers and the management team a little bit more aligned and some strategies in order to make an effective goal-setting environment. So, as I said, my name is Kyle, and what I do is I am a consultant and I'm a professor at a brewing school, and I have helped over 20 breweries get started over the years. And I want to make sure that your breweries are making the best beer possible as effectively as possible and at a higher quality. My undergrad was in chemical engineering and I am uh, writing a dissertation for a master's degree at Harriet Watt in Brewing and Distilling Sciences. So this talk is for people who are trying to get a little bit more uh, effectiveness out of their brewing schedule. So this can be brewers who are trying to get more of their needs met by management. This could be managers who are trying to get more effective results from their production team. And this could also be just people who are kind of stuck in the middle, maybe not necessarily the brewers or the managers, but people who are involved in a brewery and trying to get uh, more alignment between teams. So like an office manager or a dapper manager. So anyone that's trying to get a little bit more of a centralized path for the whole team. Now, craft beer is kind of in a challenging spot right now where I wouldn't, I wouldn't say we're quite in a crisis though. Um, the whole economy across sectors is, is struggling at the moment. And we're at about a minus 2% year to date decline in sales, which is not great. But if we do uh, effective planning now and effective strategies now when it's we're at the weakest, when uh, it's sunnier days down the road, we only are that much more efficient and that much more effective. But it's going to be a lot easier to focus on your neighborhood market or your sp specific niche now and um, use that as a, as a strategy for making sure that everything gets done in an effective manner right now. So, um, Everyone says that the craft beer was bubble, was in a bubble. I wouldn't necessarily say we were in a bubble, but it is entering a maturing industry. So that basically means it's no longer the gold rush. We're trying to um, figure out, all right, which companies are excellent and need to stay open, and then who are just people trying to pr profit off of that growth without any real plans. So it's going to have more and more challenges in those retail channels with sales overall down. We're going to see alcohol vendors try to shift from beer to non-beer products. And the craft beer landscape is also kind of in a weird um, stylistic stasis where it feels like almost every product is just being called lager, IPA, or sour without too much differentiation between the products. We also see an aging consumer base. So, uh, Right now, teenage girls are making fun of their dads on Untapped on TikTok right now. And as that average consumer age is starting to get a little bit older, we need to make sure that we're either capturing new consumers or realigning our offerings to better match this new, this changing demographic. So when I start working with a brewery for the first time, there is very little alignment with the production and the business goals. We obviously are trying to make a profitable business. If we weren't, we wouldn't be in uh, good shape to, on a year-to-year -year basis. But we want to be able to make sure that young breweries should be able to manage two brews a week. So if we're if we are doing fewer than two about two brews a week, like if you're doing if you're doing it like four brews one week and then zero the next, that's fine. But we want on average two brews a week. The reason why I say that is because if you have much fewer than two brews a week, then you are you have way too much underutilized equipment and staff, so it's going to be hard to pay the bills. But if you have much more than two brews a week when you're only about one, two, maybe three years old, then you're going to be struggling to keep up as your company grows. So we want to kind of shift towards about four production days per week. You can do that with either one shift a day or two shifts a day. But I, just as a general rule, I kind of recommend to keep Fridays for cleaning, for reorganization, for figuring out what any challenges the next week is going to have, just because um, we want the brewery to be nice and clean and sparkling for over the weekend and to make sure that there's no grain starting to rot away over three, four days of not nobody being in the brewery. Now, so the, there's, 
we need to start to have an alignment between the management and the production team as a first step. And when we make these goals, we need to think smart. And when I mean by smart, I'm going to use an acronym. And that's basically saying our goals need to be specific. They need to be measurable. They need to be achievable. They need to be relevant. They need to be time bound. So that means we say, okay, we want to make so much beer in this specific amount of time in the near future. And do you have the capacity for that? So are you able to perform those styles of beer with the equipment you have? Here's a great example of something that was a non-achievable goal. For example, when Anchor was purchased by Sapporo, Sapporo, I don't know exactly what happened, but Sapporo wanted to make their flagship lager out of the California facility, but they were all open for mentors. So they had a non-achievable goal straight from the beginning, and that's where a lot of problems came up just from that situation. So we want to make sure that we can give some numbers to something and it's actually achievable within a time frame. Now, we want to be open with all the long and short-term goals for the entire team. Uh, I don't know why, but I've seen so many companies where the managers will try to keep their cards close to their chest and then their brewers will not quite see what they're trying to do, or the brewers will be very insistent on only making specific beers or specific products and not um, go into much detail on why they're not doing that. So long-term goals should obviously be based on the overall mission stump statement of the brand. So if you are trying to do a specific style of brewing or hit a specific market, everyone should understand what those long-term goals are. And short-term goals should be based more on the products and their performance. So how do you fit in those beer brands within that long-term goal, for example? If you're trying to make the best uh, German Pilsner you can, how do you make sure that that German Pilsner is catering to your overall mission statement? Now, we want to put any goal to be summarized about on a single page. So if you have a 16-page report on why hazy IPAs are going to take over the market in the next three years, great, but that's not a goal. That's a report. The reason why we want it on a single page is because we want to be able to print it out, put it on your in front of your desk and just quickly review, wait a second, am I doing my goal effectively or am I not doing my goal effectively? Now, with easy goals, it becomes easy targets. This should this shouldn't be a groundbreaking statement, but it'd be surprised it's surprising on how few brewers actually take this approach. And if we have a good short-term goal combined with a good long-term goal. It's going to be really easy to focus on what we are doing on a day-to-day -day basis and whether that is contributing to those short-term goals or not. If someone's moving a little bit too far away from these goals, if they're focusing on something that isn't quite the in line with that uh, long-term or short-term goal, it's going to be really easy to correct them and put them on the right path just because we have a simple one-page goal and we can see, hey, is this person working towards this goal or not. And we want to try and work on correcting this as quick as possible because costs only increase as problems get pushed downstream. So I've, I've said it in previous talks before, um, when you have smaller problems as a small company, they only grow to big problems as a big company. So if we can get quick corrections at the start and with a supportive attitude, it's going to be much better for the whole team as a whole. Now, we want to be able to make the beer that is going to help reach our goals, and we want to make sure that we are brewing efficiently. I see a lot of people that come from either a restaurant or a bar environment, and they try to squeeze as many dollars out of their inventory as possible, and they just say, oh, I'll just go and pick that up a day, um, or if I'm out, I'll just go and pick it up. And that's not an effective way of managing brewing capacity simply because brewing ingredients at commercial sizes are not a day-to-day -day purchase. You can't go to a grocery store or a liquor supplier and get the bags of grain that you need. Or if you do, it's going to be twice the cost because you're only buying one bag. So we want to make sure that we have what we what is called the peak week of production cycles. So a peak week is basically the highest sales volume in a week over the year. How you calculate this is you take your overall production volume, you multiply it by per, your percent of sales. So let's say you have 13% of your overall sales in July. You multiply that by your overall volume and say you're like, I'm 5,000 barrels or I'm 2,000 barrels. And you multiply that annual capacity by the percentage of sales for the busiest week. 
of the busiest month. And then what you want to be able to do is have two weeks uh, of that peak week of supplies and of ingredients and of inventory so that it can handle most of the production problems on a day-to-day basis. So that's having eight, like, that's making sure that your flagship already has already always has two weeks of stock minimum. Um, that's making sure that you have two weeks of all the grain, all the empty kegs, all the packaging supplies. If you can get this, then most of your day-to-day problems are going to go away. If you don't have an accurate sales data or you're struggling to uh, determine what your overall percentage is, or maybe your accountant isn't picking up the phone, just take your overall annual sales and say it's about seven and a half. So you can use seven, you could use 8% and just say, all right, we want to make sure that we have 8% of our annual capacity of this product in the fridge for two weeks at all, all times. Now, many breweries don't have good manufacturing processes or a safety food safety program in place, and this can be quite problematic. Everyone seems to think of beer as not a food product, but as the brewing industry, we can just start thinking of it as um, just as detailed as a restaurant or a good um, fast food chain. Because just like we wouldn't want someone who's sick making our hamburger or our submarine sandwich for lunch, we don't want our brewers showing up with a cold and a flu and getting everybody sick and then handling the product. So for these GMPs or the food safety program, we want to start with simple checklists to ensure that the brewery is in good working order. We don't have mice in the brewery. We don't have garbage sitting around. These simple things that if we apply early can really change the overall um, production health of the facility. Now, marketing is going to get the beer sold for the first time, but the overall quality of the beer is going to get it sold a second time. So making sure that we're making a consistent and high quality product is going to make sure that our sales continues to grow by itself. Now, once we have the basics of a food safety program and some GMPs in place, we can allow for time for innovation and continuous improvement. There's no point in trying to walk before we run, so we want to make sure we have our GMPs in place and that our um, staff have proper PPE and proper training and that the brewery is clean. Then when we have that in place, we can innovate and can develop our, our products. So when we are developing new ideas, we kind of want to generalize them into either low risk or high risk categories. There are a lot of other tools that we can use to apply for this, but we want to make sure that we're prioritizing low risk ideas with a small amount of money, or if we are trying to get into high risk categories, that we have an effective way of doing that. Really crazy ideas may not gain a lot of market traction, or they might be difficult to execute. So if we are unable to deliver on that high risk category, then we are, we've wasted all that money that we have put into trying to develop that item. So we want to try and have a plan to build them up as they go and avoid putting too many eggs in one basket. We are going to have flagship brands. We're going to have best sellers. But if we're going to do a complete pivot and try to throw a crazy idea at the wall, then that could that could ultimately sink the business as a whole. So refining ideas makes good beer into great beer. So we want to start from a position of where we're making good beer. And then as we progress, we refine it into great beer. So um, we need to think about some sustainability and green practices. We don't need to get a windmill built on the property or put solar panels all over the roof if we don't have to. But in general, environmentally friendly is idea are also fiscally friendly. So if we can reduce our water, gas, or electricity, then those bills are going to drop significantly. And if we drop those bills significantly, then we're saving money. So as a quick audit, we want to make sure that we don't have any leaks. I want to say leaks for um, compressed air is one of the most intensive energy uses in a brewery. So we want to make sure that we're just, we don't have any leaky pipes. We don't have any leaky tubes. We're, we're, We're using our resources as effectively as possible. And if we're tossing everything out in the same dumpster, um, are there ways of uh, like putting cardboard in a separate bin and get a separate pick up at a different pickup fee, for example. So if we can find a new home for it or find new ways uh, to account for this, we're going to have a much better production cycle overall.
Now, this is a little bit more on the people side. It's not hard to tell people how they are valued. If they are meeting their goals on a consistent basis, they should be told that they should be you should take the time to acknowledge what they're contributing to the team. It doesn't take too long to give a couple of nice words or a little bit of an extra bonus or something like that, like a gift card for a restaurant or something like that. It doesn't take long to do these any small measures, but we need to build them into the overall culture because if the needs of the staff are ultimately taken care of, the ultimate health of the company is only going to improve. So if you have happy staff, they're going to treat your customers right. And if you treat your customers right, they're going to um, keep buying your beer. Now, when you have all of the goals of the company well understood, sharing them with the customers becomes really easy. If you have an alignment across your team on who you are as a company and what you're trying to do, it's really easy to share everything. The marketing message should be connected to the overall mission statement and your goals. And if you explain to your customers why you exist and what your purpose is, it's going to be much more easier for them to identify with your, your long-term goals. Some friends who went to high school and just like beer is no longer a unique marketing message. So you need to figure out why your buddies making your beer is much is more unique than the other buddies down the street making beer. Because everyone got into this industry because they love beer, but what is the consumer going to connect with on a more intimate level? Now, we want to be able to check in all the goals that are still meeting the overall direction of the company and change if necessary. If we are, for example, if we don't have two weeks of our grain or two weeks of our packaging supplies, we need to be able to identify that and make sure that we can correct that. Um, but if our products are no longer serving a market niche or our short-term goals, we need to form a plan to adjust the goal or find a new product to meet that goal. I personally am not the biggest fan of changing recipes in a big direction, like tweaks are fine, but I wouldn't, for example, take my Stellar IPA and make it more of a pale ale and keep the marketing the same, because uh, ultimately this can disappoint the, the fans of the original product. So if you want to take those data and figure out if they're working or not. We're doing that quick correction that, okay, is this product working? And how do we change it? Now, different team members and departments are gonna have completely different needs. That's not um, anything crazy or groundbreaking. Your sales team is gonna have different requirements in your brewing team that is gonna have different than your tappers tapper team. So if the basic short-term requirements are handled and firefighting overall problems are rare, the overall company health is going to be significantly better. If we don't have our tapper manager stressed about the simple things like uh, cleaning chemicals or those other day-to-day -day issues, we're able to execute on our long-term goals better. So it's important to outline any fixed or fluid barriers for each department. If your brewery does not have enough uh, of a certain keg type, it doesn't help if the sales team keeps trying to push that format. So we need to figure out which, which ones are fixed barriers and which ones are fluid barriers. It's not possible to do keg transfers if all the brewing team is away on a Saturday, for example. That's a fixed barrier. We don't want to call on a brewery on their day off, brewers on the day off because they need that rest and relaxation to be great on Monday. Where fluid ones are going to have wiggle room. Like when, when can we actually get those um, different keg formats out in a pinch? So having the hard and soft uh, limits established for a company is really important so that uh, people's uh, emotions don't get trampled over. Now, in kind of as a conclusion, we want to make specific and well-defined goals. We want to give small and direct praise when it occurs to steer towards the results that we are doing. And we want to evaluate decisions quickly, but don't let them interfere with the overall performance. So when we're getting off of the path of the goals, we want to just do a quick little uh, check in and make sure that we're actually working towards the correct goals or not. And this allows us to be nimble on a day to day basis, but firm on an annual level. If everyone's kind of working in the same direction and everyone knows the direction they're supposed to be working with, it allows us to be uh, much more better at managing the small day to day problems, but in still reaching the goals on a long term basis. I'm going to give a quick minute for any questions that have come up. Feel free to put them in the comments.
All right, I'm not seeing too many questions. So what I'm going to do is I'll, I'll just provide my contact information so you can email me directly. But as part of the conference, uh, feel free to use the code uh, CVP10 at gormansmith.com to get 10% off of an order. And if you like some of these ideas, um, I highly recommend Go, looking up the books, the new one man, manager and a book called Two Second Theme. They're great resources for figuring out how to achieve these results. And they just offer some different viewpoints from what I was considering. And then this is how you can reach me. My website is gormansmith.com and my email address is kyle at gormansmith.com. So thank you very much and have a great day.